back, guys, to the ARC. Welcome back, guys. Last time, Wuna gave us some great answers, and today we're even eager to ask him more questions. We're just waiting on him now, but I think he's here. Hi, Fadi. Hi, Marina. How are you guys doing? Good, how are you? Good to see you. See how are you, Marina? You too, Wuna. Good. So we're going to continue. I heard about the questions that you had from last time. Yeah, we have a bit more questions to ask you. Very good. Oh, Boon, I was wondering, um, why do we have to kiss your cross and the hand? Very good. Um, usually we should start with the cross and then the hand. Um, uh, the reason being is that first the cross is to uh, uh, kind of like renew our um, uh, our vows with the cross that we are faithful and we are staying faithful to the cross and to our struggle and uh, to accept the cross in our life and also to know that from the cross we gain all the power that we have uh, to uh, use to go through any um, tribulations until we reach heaven. Okay. Uh, the other side is that we kiss Abuna, uh, Abuna's hand uh, or the priest hand, uh, because Abuna uh, represents uh, all the sacraments, because uh, the priest uh, is the main person who administer all the sacraments, and the priest represented, um, of course, uh, first in his uh, holiness, the Pope, and then in all the metropolitans, the bishops, the hegumens, and um, the priests, right? So, as a priesthood, um, administer all the sacraments and uh, most of all uh, of course the sacrament of the Eucharist right and which is during uh, Abuna uh, holds the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and uh, that in itself is a great blessing and um, a great opportunity to uh, also show respect uh, to that there is a very important also um, uh, part during the uh, raising of incense uh, where you, have you ever seen um, uh, Abuna at the end of the raising of incense whether evening or morning that Abuna holds like uh, the gospel uh, first and then with the cross on top and you come and kiss mm -hmm. right um, we do the same thing we start with the cross and then you kiss the gospel and then Abuna's hand uh, in that instant, for example, again, the same reason for kissing the cross. And then you kiss the gospel to accept the, all the instructions and all the blessings that are coming from the Word of God, accepting the Word of God and His instructions uh, in my life. And to kiss Abuna's hand to also accept Abuna as being the spiritual um, guidance and the spiritual uh, counselor and uh, a father of confession, right? Uh, whom I also uh, receive uh, the uh, Holy Spirit instructions for me in my life as well. Interesting. Oh. How is that? That was a good answer. Very good. Very good answer. Good, I'm glad to hear that. Okay. So just to continue too, um, what is this wall behind us that, that, that covers the actual sanctuary from the congregation? What is it called? Well, very good. Uh, so. What we have here, you're, you mean uh, where we have all the icons, right? Yes. Uh, as you have mentioned, it's kind of like a barrier uh, that's separating the Holy of Holies, right? Uh, which is the sanctuary behind it. Uh, and that represents uh, mainly, the, represents heaven. Okay? And uh, at this point of time, uh, there is no one, no one in heaven but our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And uh, therefore, uh, the icons on the wall, we call it the iconostasis, or the wall that carries the icons, okay? And mainly, it's not just a wall, it's just basically uh, the, a wooden structure that holds uh, all the icons. So this structure represents paradise. So that is basically the one step or the place the waiting place for the righteous, the saints, uh, before into entering uh, heaven. That's why you uh, you don't see um, 
you don't see any of these icons inside the uh, sanctuary. You only see inside the sanctuary um, at the bosom of the Father and the uh, main icons about the uh, Christ, the Pantocrator, and the angels. Uh, so the iconostasis uh, represents uh, paradise, and that's why you see all um, the, uh, the, the saints uh, represented there. Of course, there is a specific um, order for that. So, what is the specific order? Very good. So, as you can see, um, here we have the curtain. Last time we opened uh, the curtain, but you know, behind it, we have the bosom of the Father, which represents the presence uh, of Christ and God in there. And then, as soon as you step outside heaven, right, uh, the queen sat at the right hand of the king, right? Therefore, we have St. Mary, the first icon on the right hand of the uh, heaven, or the first icon um, coming out from the sanctuary on the right hand uh, of the, the iconostasis. Then you notice also um, the highest point of the iconostasis is the cross. That is to say that uh, all these saints, uh, the apostles, St. Mary, uh, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints uh, that you might see in different iconostasis, they all uh, be, uh, reach that state only through the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you see the cross, uh, the highest point of the iconostasis. Um, after that, we said St. Mary, and then you see all the other icons and St. Mark. And if there is an icon for the Annunciation uh, with Archangel uh, Gabriel, uh, it will be there. And all the saints. And we can fill the church with as many icons as we want um, around the church. And then we come back and we see in the order here uh, St. John the Baptist, right? Um, and of course, uh, St. John the Baptist is referred to as being the best man of the bridegroom. You know, have, uh, uh, have you ever seen in a wedding, uh, where does the best man uh, stand? Next to the groom. Where? Which side? On his left. On his left. Excellent. So you see, uh, if the bridegroom, our Lord Jesus Christ, right there in the center, then on his left, right away, you find St. John the Baptist. And that's why we have the icon of uh, uh, baptism right there. Okay? You see also the apostles uh, on top of the iconostasis to show also that they reached that uh, um, uh, place through the cross. Mm -hmm. And then right in the middle, you see the icon of uh, the Eucharist, um, which uh, our Lord Jesus Christ instituted the sacrament of Eucharist uh, on Thursday. That is to say, of course, now uh, through the cross and through partaking of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, they have reached those uh, places. You notice also that they are looking toward us, right? Have you noticed anything special about them? It looks like they're smiling. Very good. They're looking like they're smiling. They have like a light smile. That's to give us like kind of a, an encouragement, um, like they are in a good place. They're, they're, they're enjoying, they're happy. Uh, they're in complete uh, bliss. So they give a light smile, uh, encouraging us, come, come, we're waiting for you. Uh, don't give up. Uh, persevere more and more and uh, go through your struggles. You have the cross, you have the Eucharist and we are waiting for you. So they're looking uh, back at us. And that encourages us also being in the church. We look at the icons and we gain from their uh, uh, power, from their strength, which they got from our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, the thing is that the icons in our church, it's different. It's not just we don't call it uh, a portrait. We don't call it um, like a, a painting. Uh, it's, it's an icon and we write icons. We don't 
uh, draw or paint icons. The reason is that um, the icons are representing the saint in true. So as if we are actually talking to the saint or looking at the saint life. So a lot of times you don't see like the icon represent like exact features of the saint, but, the, but mainly they represent uh, the saint life, uh, explain about his or her uh, struggle and uh, certain things that we can learn uh, from. Speaking of the icons, um, I know sometimes during like feast days, they put candles in front of icons. In general, what do candles represent in the church? Because we do use them in a lot of different spots. That's true. We use the candles in uh, uh, different uh, areas, different spots, uh, in different occasions. Um, mainly, every time we have a candle in front of an icon uh, of a saint, we said the icon in our church actually represents uh, the, the presence of uh, the saint, him or herself. Therefore, we put a candle to show that their life was uh, a light which, which is reflected from Christ, a light that's reflecting also to the whole world and um, a light that uh, gave uh, sh or was shining in front of people and brought a lot of um, people to Christ. In many of the uh, saints' stories and martyrs, you, you notice that um, they attracted more people, they preached to more people, whether saints being or martyrs while they're um, being persecuted, you hear in a lot of the stories like, oh, and uh, hundreds joined the faith and they gained also martyrdom. Oh, and thousands joined. So a candle in front of an icon represents um, uh, the life that was shining of that, the shining life of that saint. Candles, on the other hand, when, you know, when we are reading the gospel on those uh, podiums, um, represent uh, to say that now the gospel is being read and therefore this is the word of God, the light that comes into the world, the true light that comes into the world. Uh, the third one, also the use of the candle, every time that Abuna holds um, the body or the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have a light for the same reason, uh, for the same reason is that uh, now Christ is revealed because every time uh, the, um, the body or the blood is in, uh, inside covered, uh, it's kind of like um, we don't see. But as soon as Abuna touches it or uh, uh, carries it up during the uh, blessings or during the fraction, right, we have a candle to say that uh, Christ is revealed and his light is shining uh, among uh, people and so on. Okay. Oh, Abuna, I also mm. had a question about um, the symbols. Why do we use symbols and the triangle instead of like other instruments? Uh, very good. Uh, our church is, uh, is very simple in, um, in terms of um, the, uh, the use of instruments. And we just uh, use uh, those simple uh, instruments just to kind of like regulate the rhythm of uh, hymns in the church and uh, to give a lead to the congregation and to the deacons to flow in order together. Mm -hmm. I'm sure uh, Fadi uh, didn't uh, maybe uh, think of this question that deep. Uh, they, they just, deacons use it all the times. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Very good. Thank you.